John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. So neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for him. Uh, so here's what happened. Now you might have heard one time uh, Jesus fed over 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a, and a few fish. And he gave it and passed it out. So these are those people. They just got fed all this food. They look around. Jesus is gone. Where is he? Let's get in the boat. I think they went that way. So they sailed across. That's what's happening. When they found Jesus on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw a sign but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For it is him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform these works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. They said to him, what signs are you going to give them so that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you performing? Where are these people? Didn't he just feed them all? Didn't they just see him heal sick? He saw all these signs. Like, oh wait, if this is you, what else? What are you going to do to prove it to us? And they, they kind of give this answer now, and they're going to prove it to themselves. The answer, our ancestors, the people went on to say, ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our fortress. Amen. Denise, I apologize for transitioning so quickly. I hope you got it started. We're good? Okay. Again, we're picking up from where we left off last week. Jesus feeds over 5,000 people, and Jesus saw the hearts of these people. Jesus left because he realized their hearts were full of their own worldly desires. What the people wanted to do was make Jesus their king. He want, they wanted to get rid of the Roman rulers that were in their area. So they wanted to figure with all the miracles he could do, he'll be just like Judas Maccabee, we'll, we'll all be free if we can just make him our king. Um, the people just didn't get it. So Jesus left. He goes across the lake to the other side. And when they find him, Jesus says, you're here uh, not because you're, you, you saw signs, because you saw miracles. You're here because you ate and you filled your belly, and now you want more. You're here for your own selfish desires rather than be here for the right reasons. That's what Jesus was saying to them. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, with food. Food is very important. Food sustains life. We all need food. Uh, and the people, they went back and they started talking about the manna that the people received from God. You see, here's what happened. The Israelites, they're, they're enslaved in Egypt. They didn't start out as slaves in Egypt, but they became slaves in Egypt. They, they, they were just put to task, building work, building buildings, building whatever, uh, making clay bricks all the time. So they're just put to task. 
And they're asking God to free them from their bondage. God does that. They leave Egypt. They go through the Red Sea. They go through the sea that God parted for them. The Egyptian army decides, hey, we're going to take these people out. They go chasing them. They get halfway through the sea. Their chariots get bogged down in the mud. And God just closes the walls of water and um, destroys them. They saw this. And now they're in the wilderness fleeing. And you think they'd be happy. You think they'd be like, wow, we, we did this. God got us through this. No, what they say is, wow, we don't have much food. Why did Moses bring us out here? He brought us out here to starve to death. You know, it would be better if we were in Egypt. Wait a minute. You got exactly what God wanted, and now you want to be back to where you are. That's what they did. They complained. They complained. If we were back in Egypt, we'd have food and wine and all this good stuff. Now we're here. we got nothing. We're just going to starve to death. We're all going to die. They complained. Now, warning. Big warning here. Complaining is contagious. Complaining is contagious. We all know what contagious is. Does anybody not know what contagious is after going through a year and a half of this stuff? All right. And have any of you taken at least one caution? Maybe just wash your hands a little more because of what was going on. Do we all take precautions from, from this virus that's going around? We all have. Now, here's my next question. How many Honestly, how many of you honestly have taken precautions against complaining? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about this week. How often have I really seriously taken a precaution against complaining? The worst part of complaining is that complaining affects one's faith. And our faith in Jesus is what saves our souls. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who could kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Be afraid of him. And complaining destroys our faith. And when our faith is destroyed, we lose our faith in Jesus, and that's dangerous. Sometimes I wonder, am I, am I one of those people who was just seeking out Jesus that day so that I could get what I want? Was I seeking out Jesus just so I could fill my own belly? And then I think about the Hebrew people, and I think, well, how could they complain like that? God gave them everything. They wanted food. God gives them manna, and then they still complain. I'm not like that, right? No, I'm exactly like that at times. God gives me what I need, and then I complain that it's not enough. That's dangerous. Complaining is dangerous. And then, as Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That's what I need. I need Jesus in my life. I need to put him first. I need to put my worries on the side. I need to never complain. I need to protect myself from being infected by those who are complaining. The way to protect ourselves is to place God first in our lives. You see, the people in the gospel reading wanted to make Jesus their earthly king. But Jesus is their creator. Paul wrote to the Colossians. Paul wrote to the Colossians and said, all things were created through Jesus and for Jesus. For in Jesus, all things were created. So we're going to take the creator and tell him, okay, yeah, you could be our earthly ruler. But God, Jesus created all things visible and invisible. So they wanted to take him and demote him, <laughs> basically, is what they were trying to do. Um, and... To only worry about our physical needs is not healthy. It's not a balanced approach to life. Because we have a soul, we have a spirit, and we have a body. And the two have to be taken care of. If we go back um, to that, uh, where we read in um, 
Debbie, when we read the Old Testament about manna, you think they stopped complaining once they got the manna? Yeah. Now, because after a while they said, I'm tired of this manna. I had enough manna for the rest of my life. I wish I had some meat. That's what we need. Then I'd be happy. Well, let me tell you, be careful what you ask for, because they complained to God for me. And this is Pastor Tom's translation, and it's a fairly accurate translation. You ready for this? God said, you want meat? I'll give you meat. I will give you so much meat that it will come out your nose. And he did. He made a wind blow into the camp, and the camp with the wind that was blowing into the camp stacked quail three feet high. All they had to do was just reach over and pick up a quail. They had all the meat they could ever want. Uh, you think they were happy then? <laughs> More complaints. And but here's the real interesting part. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy, after the people have left the wilderness, this is something that's very interesting, and this is what God still does for us today. The Lord said, during the 40 years that I led you through the desert, your clothes did not wear out, nor did your sandals on your feet, neither the clothes nor their sandals ever wore out. The Lord said, you ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. In a little while, we'll celebrate communion. I know I used the word wine in there. We drink unfermented wine, grape juice. Uh, interesting story. You ever want to hear it? I'll tell you all about it. How, how Welch's grape juice from Vineland became, that's what it was for, was to create something, uh, unfermented wine is what he was creating uh, during the time of Prohibition. And as I was a kid, I was growing up, and I would think, Violet, why can't I have a nice hunk of that bread instead of just a little piece? Why don't we get these little tiny glasses instead of like a nice big glass of that fresh grape juice. Why don't we just get a little bit? Uh, it was Paul who said, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away my childish ways. When I became a man, I realized, when I became a man of God, I realized, you know why I only get a little bit? Because that's all I need. Not what you want in life, it's what you need. God will provide for you, your shoes won't wear out, your clothes won't get holes. Uh, if they do, he'll provide you with new ones. He will take care of you. Jesus said, don't worry about what you'll wear. Don't worry about what you'll eat. Don't say, what shall we drink? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. So this week, let's protect ourselves. Let's protect ourselves from complaining. Let's be thankful for what we have. That's a way to defeat Satan. Instead of worrying about what we don't have, let's be thankful for what we do. And as we thank God for the little things that he gave us, we'll realize what great things he has gave us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you. We are truly thankful for all that you have given us to this day. Father, help us to see our blessings and help us to understand the difference between our wants and our needs. Watch over us, guide us, and keep us safe. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.